tell you right now, if it happens, it's going to be there are going to be people literally fleeing for their lives. You can call them sheep or the unprepared or whatever you want, but the bottom line is their primary concern at that point is survival. They want to get away from the person who is killing other people. They will not assist you. Do not count on them to help you. You need to get them out of your way. You need to close with the shooter as fast as possible and exercise the most, um, the largest amount of violence you are capable of. Stop the shooter. Ah! Oh. 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 target of an active shooter. The shooter may have specific targets in mind, but history has shown that the random killing is just as likely and should be expected. With a personal crime comes personal contact. The first signs of an active shooter may be gunfire. Uh, it's highly likely, since we can't be attentive at all times, 100% situationally aware, we do get complacent, um, that your first signs of something going wrong is people screaming, people running, or the sounds of muffled gunfire, or you may physically see the guy pull out a gun and just start shooting people. Um, crowded areas will become chaotic immediately. Bystanders will do many things, and one thing you can and should count on them to do is to get in your way. If you're making movement to the shooter, the path of least resistance is going to be against the wall because they will not, they can't get around you on that side. If I pin myself to the wall and move down the wall, can they get by me between me and the wall? They may try, but likely they're going to go around. Path of least resistance for them is running, fleeing, screaming, whatever they happen to be doing, let them go. If you don't know where the shooter is, where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he? Show me your hands, keep your hands up. I'm here to help. If you need to identify yourself that you're trying to stop the shooter, where is he, I'm here to help. Again, this is imperfect. I cannot give you any kind of pre-prepared speech that is going to get compliance or anything out of people who are fleeing a shooter. They may see you and decide to run a different direction. What they won't probably do is run back towards the shooter. So wherever they go, for the sake of finding and stopping the shooter, isn't important to you. Just get them out. You're another guy with a gun, and chances are you're not identified by a uniform. Now, they do sell these CCW things that you can carry on your belt that you can kind of throw over you, and it's really bright green, and it says CCW. Shoot. Yeah, shoot here. Um, they have one that says security. They have one that says police. For off-duty cops, I think they're a great idea. Uh, for CCWs, I leave that up to you. Um, if it's something you want to uh, add to part of your EDC, um, it can be beneficial when law enforcement responds. Is it necessarily going to be beneficial to someone who has no frame of reference to what CCW even means? Because think about it. If you're not in the gun culture, you've never heard that acronym. Quite possibly. And how are most cops going to know? Yeah. You have, and that's the thing, is we don't want to depend too much on their level of training because we don't know the quality of the training they receive. A lot of officers do not get training. I never received training on how to deal with a responsible gun-carrying citizen that I have to encounter. I know how to deal with bad people. I was taught how to deal with people, criminals with guns, but I was never given a block of instruction on how to interact with someone who has a legal CCW. I had to teach search. I don't know where the shooter's at, but I know he's here somewhere. I've got incomplete or stale information. If you run into somebody, the last person running down the hall or the first person running down the hall is like, I think he's still in the hallway or I think he's still upstairs in the offices, something like that. That could be stale information, right? Um, verbal warnings as prudent. Uh, a really good example of verbal warnings when they weren't prudent was the first Fort Hood shooting. Uh, Kimberly Nunley, Sergeant Nunley, um, she responded, got out of her vehicle, she closed on Hassan. Hassan's back was to her, she drew her uh, duty weapon and she said, halt military police before she shot him. So what did he do? He turned around and shot her. She had a perfectly good shot. He was not aware of her presence until she announced her presence. I don't want an armchair shooting that happened because people get a little hinky when you do that, but common sense. Anybody here think she was more, she had a better advantage until she announced herself? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give verbal warnings when prudent. If you think you can, you can dispatch this person without issuing a warning or giving a command, by all means do so. If someone has showed willful disregard for public safety and human life and they're killing people actively, am I worried about drop the fucking gun? No. It's up to you personally if you want to issue a verbal warning before you use force. But if they're hurting people and issuing a warning might endanger your safety and your best ability to stop them, you might want to consider not doing that to draw attention to yourself. You're, you're, you're telling civilians to go in there and stop the guy. And I'm like, no, I'm giving them the skills if they choose to. There's a difference. I'm not telling you guys to do it. 
I'm telling you, if you choose to, this can help you. Is there anything gained by not knowing any of this stuff? Obviously, people have intervened, as you've seen in the class, people have already intervened. So I don't really see a problem. And the cops didn't show up and shoot the shit out of that guy, did they? All right, so we talked about deliberate search, right? There's nothing driving us because we don't have enough information. Now, say I come into the building and I hear gunshots. I can hear them. They're coming from that direction. Now, I have a good idea where the shooter is. I know the shooter is active. Every single gunshot I hear could be someone getting killed, right? So I need to move a little faster. Do I have time to deliberately clear every corner, deliberately slice every doorway? No. Known will take precedence over unknown. That makes sense? I know that the shooter is down there because I can hear the guy shooting. So I'm going to move faster. This corner right here, I might literally just do it like this. Okay, now I'm in the hallway. There's a door here. I'm moving down. I'm going to visually clear it as I go by. Visually clear it as I go by. And I'm just going to keep moving towards the sounds of violence. Now, if say the shooting stops, I slow down. I'm still going to keep moving in the direction I heard the gunshots coming from, but since I don't hear any sounds of violence, now I don't know where he is. I have a pretty good idea where he last was, and it's in that direction. But I physically don't know, especially think about a building you've never been in. Or maybe you've never been in that part of the mall, or that part of the movie theater, or that part of the office building. You don't know the floor plan. So you know the direction he's in, but that's it. So you've got to slow it down, and then you've got to start clearing those doorways again. And that is the hardest thing to do, is to go from direct to threat to deliberate speed. It's easy to go from deliberate to direct, but it's hard to slow it's it down and take your time again. Because if he's not shooting, he's not doing what? He's not killing people, he's not killing people at that moment. If you, the gunshots start again, you can pick up speed again. But if you're the only person immediately in this area who can stop him, slow it down so when you get there, you can still stop him. Because the last thing you want is, say when he started shooting, he started heading this way. He's heading right for you and you have no idea. And say he's coming out of that room right as you go by. And you didn't clear that room because you were still moving full speed. Now he's behind you. How many buildings have you ever been in where halls loop back on themselves or rooms go through rooms into other hallways? This building's a perfect example of it. I can get behind you through a number of different ways. Every door in this hallway leads to that other hallway. Goes through a room out the other side. So it's very easy for me to get behind somebody if I want to. So for deliberate search speed, I'm visually clearing doors as I pass by them. I'm going to stick to the wall as much as I can, but I need to be in the center of the hallway to get the most view into each room I go by. So the only time for me personally I'm going to stick to this wall is if I got people running by me. That makes sense? If the hallway is clear and open, I'm going to stay in the middle as long as I have doors on either side I need to clear. <clears throat> Does anybody not agree with that? Does anybody think that hey, they know a different way to do it? Anybody have a different way to do it? Because this isn't the only way. If there's doors on only one side, you... you yeah, yeah. If there's doors only on one side of the hallway, I'm going to stay as far away from them as I can because that gives me the most angle into each room I pass. Obviously, the closer I am to the doorway, the less I can see into it as I go by. It makes sense? Cool. Now, who wants to go first? Uh, again, my only critique is you're on the sites, so you're eliminating your lower visual horizon. A little you're differently. Right. Yeah. I, you're moving, your speed's good. But if you're reasonably sure the gunshots are coming from the back of the building, uh, spend less time muzzling rooms, more time moving. Okay. Now, you can, if you want, and this is on you, this is your personal choice, you can put your gun everywhere your eyes go, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying you can, if you think you can, move a little faster. If you can't move any faster, that's a great speed. Where's your fire? Shut the fuck up! Wait, show your fucking ass! Get down!
We're no, trying man, to stay calm, but you keep on telling us. It's not his fault. When is he going to be done? Maintenance is coming. We're going to get this straightened out. No, no, no. When? When? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I got places to be, yo. That's bullshit. There's a surprise. Marvel's broke. He's all over the place. I don't know. I don't know. Look, unfortunately, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to shut this turnstile down and have you guys go outside. Fuck this. Where's the fucking doctor? He's in the Where's the doctor? Doctor's right there. Doctor's right there. Where's the doctor? Where's the doctor? Where's the doctor? Motherfucker. Call 911. Call 911. Police, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Where's he at? Don't move. Don't move. There's a bar. What? I saw some guy sitting there next to my house. I don't know. Good show, man. Yeah. 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 What's it about? The new Hunger Games, man. The third and final. Yeah. 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 I heard it's good. Yeah. Old cat in the 70s, she's a hobby, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she does look pretty good. Look at that. Got a big show. Oh, my God. Yeah. Taking four. Oh, shit! God damn it! Come on, you fuckers, we're gonna be late. Yeah, hold us up. Craig Murray special. Craig Murray. Are you serious? 5'7". Come on. 5'7". No, no, no shorter than 5'7". Like, no no come on. No fucking shorter, man. Come on. What's that guy right there? I'm fucking out of shit. Oh, shit! 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 Oh, Check that shooter, is he down? Hey. Um, everyone out. Uh, so I was downstairs. I heard uh, rounds getting fired. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear people yelling and screaming as I come up the stairs. Mm -hmm. As I come up the stairs, people are just running all over the place. Yeah. Saying shooter, shooter, stuff like that. Running into some people, kind of having to get them off me, telling them they're here to help. As I turned the corner, I saw the backstop of the gun. Yeah. And thought about shooting, but kind of remember the last time I was too far away. So I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to give that away. So I entered this room and mm -hmm. ran into another civilian, kind of told him, call 911, get down, get down, get down. As I came around, I saw the barrel poke out and his arm poke out, so I shot two rounds down that way, mm -hmm. and he went mm -hmm. in. So instead of continuing to go following him all the way around, I snuck through that hallway yeah. and flanked him and went around, and then I loaded, and then by the time I got to him... No, but I mean, tell me from the beginning what happened. <sighs> First of all, people are banging on my fucking apartment, like, not fixing shit. Yeah. So I kind of play with it to, like, with, trying to get in the scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was trying to de-escalate the situation with him, like, dude, my check clear, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then, I was scanning a little bit, because these guys are really annoying already. And yeah, I see yeah. this, that's weird, now I'm thinking about it, like, he came through, I, all I saw was gun, and then, 
people yelling and then I heard a fire, I heard a shot fire. Mm -hmm. I could obviously, use, there's no reason for me, people to be shooting other people in my apartment, so. Yeah. I don't think he saw me necessarily. Yeah. Because he was kind of focusing, it looked like. Yeah, like maybe, the, maybe. These guys that I don't really have any investment in, but. Yeah, yeah. You're in my apartment, I took cover, I was like, I'm, I want to act now and try to get him. Yeah. I, I but I saw he was good. still up. Yeah. I was like, fuck that, I'm not going to go back in the same zone I was in. Mm -hmm. Circle, circle around, yeah, yeah, and just try to get them. No, it went well. <coughs> um, role players. Obviously, most of you guys just kind of bailed as soon as the shooting started. I ran into them. Yeah, yeah, I ran. They were trying to push me on purpose. Yeah, with yeah. With, uh, yeah I was like, fucking got them. Well, I mean, let's be honest. The guy comes in a room shooting. These guys are trying to get out of here. They, they yeah. just want you out of here. You, you, right. yeah, you grab the wall. Perfect. Though. You grab the wall. Got low. Yeah, you got gripped the wall. You ran down. You got concealment. Yeah, yeah. Look really good. Um, and this whole scenario, the whole thing is these guys are in here renovating. This guy, he got fired earlier today. He went down to his truck, got his fucking gun, came back up. Okay. Wow. So that was basically... He hit right. the floor. Oh, no. He just acted like... Yeah, he just went down. That was is there anything wrong with that? No. Absolutely. And as soon as he did it, I was like, oh, I know what he's doing. Yeah. And, I, and he got the bag downstairs. I'm like, he must have a gun in the back. Now, all things considered, the bag is going to be a slower <laughs> access than carrying on the hip. However, Absolutely. if you find yourself, if you know your job or something doesn't allow you to carry it work, and you have a bag like this, a bag. keep it in the bag. Yeah. And then if you're out and like you know, in this thing, he's coming up here. He's going to meet his wife. He's got his bag with him. No big deal about that. He comes in the gallery. And this guy comes in shooting, and realistically, he wouldn't know that that guy had a gun because if he did, he would shot him fucking first. And of course, as a role player, this is one thing you guys have to realize, and I think everybody's done a pretty good job of it so far. If the student goes to go into roll, you don't know he's the student. Now, as soon as the gun comes out, you can obviously fixate on him because that's what you would do anyway. But you did, I, I got nothing bad to say, man. That was beautiful. You waited, too, and I told he was kind of standing like, what should I do now, what should well, I do I now? Well, I, I mean, I, I saw you moving the bag. I could have shot you, but I just wanted to let you try to draw me. So I was just, you know. Well, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know if I should just shoot you or what.